Super Liminal is a super fun and super interesting game. My light. My light. My light. My light. My light. So today I'm going to be creating this tutorial to show you how you can recreate the core mechanics of Super Liminal inside of Unity. And before we do that, I'm going to demonstrate how they work inside of Unity. So we have our little testing chamber. We have a reticle on the screen to help us aim with our raycasts. We have a character controller, which is just a bunch of cap tools. Actually, it's just one capsule. This is a bunch of shadows. And we have our little target object. That's a little red ball. So when I left click on the ball, as you can see, it stays the exact same relative size to the screen. But inside of the game world, it actually changes size. So if I go over here and release it, it's a little tiny ball and of course I can do the exact same opposite and if I release it there it increased in size but let's do it one more time oh this is gonna be huge just a little bit more there we go and now we have this huge red ball awesome so now that we see how it works let's go to unity and see how our scene is set up and after that we'll go to visual studio code and see how our script works Inside of our scene view, you can see we have a little room, which is just a cube with inverted textures. And we have a couple of lights. We have our red ball, which is called some target. And we have our player with a main camera. Now, these are the things we'll have to set up before we go into the script. So you know exactly what we're talking about. Now we have our target. And the first important thing is that it has a rigid body and a sphere collider. Or any collider for that matter but you know if you have a object you probably have a collider attached to it the next thing that's important is that it has its own layer now i've created a layer called targetable and i've assigned this object to that layer we're gonna need this so we can filter ray casts later on in the script the next thing we have is our main camera which has a bunch of stuff but the most important thing right here is the super liminal script and this script has a bunch of components. Now, as you can see, we have a few parameters as well, and we have a target mask, which is going to be our targetable layer, which is the exact same layer that we have assigned over here. So this is really important to have. And of course we have the ignore target mask, and over here we have everything except for the targetable and the player layer mask. And of course I've set the player to the player layer, that kind of rhymed, <laughs> but um, yeah, because we do not want to hit our player or our object with the... Oh, hello, this was the uh, reflection probe. We do not want to hit the player with our raycast uh, once we want to resize the object. And of course, we do not want to hit the object with the raycast once we want to resize the object. And I'll show you later on why. So now that we have our scene set up, we can go to Visual Studio Code and see how the script works. Now that we're inside of Visual Studio Code, we have our superliminal script opened, and of course it derives from mono behavior. Now we have a couple of variables here, but we're gonna ignore them for the time being, as well as the start method, which just locks the cursor, and we're gonna go straight to the update method. Now two things happen in the update method. We handle the player input, and then we resize the target. Let's go into the player input method and see what happens over here. So we check if the player has a mouse button down or if you click the left mouse button in this frame now of course this is using the old input system if you're using the new input package now this is going to be exactly the same just but with different code so it's exactly the same logic still works and then we have two options now when we click the left mouse button as you saw in the demonstration we either pick up the object or release it now of course if our current picked up object is null which is target which is of type transform so if our current object is null, that means we do not have an object to pick up and we want to pick up a certain object we hit. How do we do that? We go raycast hit, uh, we create this little variable where that's going to store the information about our uh, raycast hit. And then we go if physics.raycast, we, we get the raycast from the transform.position of the camera. And then we send it towards the plus Z axis of the camera, which is a transform dot forward of our main camera. We store the information in our hit variable, we send it infinitely, and then we have the target mask. Now, if you remember from the demonstration inside of the Unity inspector, our uh, target object has a target uh, layer. And of course, we have set the layer mask to be that target layer because only the targetable objects that can be resized should be hit by this raycast. Everything else should be ignored. So this is why we use this 
layer mask. If you're not sure how layer masks work, I'll leave a link in the description to see how it, it works. It's just Unity documentation. It's really simple to understand. And if you do not know how to use it, I highly encourage you to uh, look into it because it's super useful and saves you a lot of time and a lot of pain. So let's assume we hit a target, we can resize. So what do we do then? We assign our target uh, variable to be the hit.transform. Of course, hit saves the uh, information about rake as hit, and then we just get the transform component of the object we hit. We then disable its physics by setting its rigid body uh, is kinematic boolean to true. And then we do two things, actually do three things. We first calculate the original distance, which is the distance between the uh, camera and the object uh, the moment we clicked on it. And we do that by going vector 3.distance, transform.position, and then target.position. Super simple. We go original scale. Now, we want to save the original scale so we can later do something with it. You're going to see what happens. But for now, let's just save the original scale. And of course, we go target.local scale, not global. We go local scale. Dot x. Now, this is assuming that uh, the scale on all axes, x, y, and z, is going to be exactly the same. If it's not for you, you can save it, the, the information to vector 3 and then later use all of the components separately. But in my case, I'm just going to assume that all of the scales are exactly the same, so I'm just going to store one of them, and the first one that I stored is x, and that works just fine. Then we have our target scale. Now, our target scale is going to be used later but we have to have a baseline for it so we go target scale is equal to target dot local scale so in the beginning the target scale is the original scale of the target i know this all sounds weird why do we have an original scale here and then we save it again here don't worry it's going to make a lot of sense later on okay so this is in the case where we want to collect a target actually we want to click on a target and resize it but what if we have a target and we want to get rid of it. Well, if we click the last left mouse button, and if we do have a target, which would have been assigned over here, then this if statement won't pass, and we're gonna go right over here. What happens here is really simple. We just set the kinematic to be false, so the object has physics again, and then we put our target variable to be null, so once we want to pick up a new target, this if statement will pass. Awesome, so now that we have handled our input and we have uh, attached our object so to speak to us what we're gonna do then is we're gonna go to resize target now what happens here we have the method right over here well first things first we want to check if we have a target or not now if we do have a target this if statement won't pass and we'll continue to the method but if we do not have a target this will just do return and we'll do none of this because well if we do not have a target we have nothing to resize so once we have a target and this if statement doesn't pass, we just go raycast hit again. We want to save information about raycast hit. And then we raycast again from our camera's position. We go forward, we save the information, we go infinitely because I'm inside of a box and don't have to worry about constraints. And then we have the ignore target mask. Now, remember from before in the scene view, we had a target mask that was everything except the player and the target. So we have to use that because we do not want our raycast to hit a target because in that case it's just gonna go come gonna go you know closer and closer to us and I'm gonna demonstrate that at the end of the video. So once we have that, we do this. We have the target position. Now the target position is the, of course, the position of our object and how do we set it? So we go hit that point. Now the hit point is the location where the raycast hit something. In our case, it's just walls because that's all we have. And of course, you want to offset it a little bit because we do not want it to clip through walls. Of course, it still does. This is not perfect. This is just an approximation. Uh, it won't work, for example, if you hit a if you hit a corner of the wall, then it'll clip through one of the planes and so on. But works for now. If you're doing a game, you want to polish this as much as possible. It's a little bit trickier, you, you probably want to do a sphere cast and whatnot, but this works just fine. So we go hit point, minus transform.forward, so we bring it closer to the camera, multiplied by an offset factor that we manually enter in our inspector, and multiplied by the scale of the target, because as, as it gets bigger, we want to move it further away from the wall, as, as it gets smaller, we want to move it closer to the wall. 
So what do we do then? Well, we calculate the current distance from our camera to the uh, to the object that we're trying to resize. And then we have a scale, a float s. So we save, save the scale, be the current distance divided by the original distance. So of course, if the current distance is uh, greater than the original distance, the scale factor will be greater than one, which means the object will have to get increased. And if, analogously, if the object is closer than before, then it will have to be uh, reduced in size. So then when we have our scale factor, we just go target scale dot x equals target scale dot y equals target scale dot z is equal to s. And of course, what we do then is we go target dot transform, which is completely pointless because we already have the transform, so we can remove this. We go target dot local scale is equal to target scale, which is the scale we want to achieve, times the original scale. So this is why we had to save the and we have to save the original scale into our variables and that's pretty much it so now that you have the code uh, i'll also be linking the code with all of the comments uh, in the in the description uh, if you have any questions of course feel free to ask but now let's go and demonstrate what happens if we just remove this layer mask so i'll see you back in unity so back in unity i'm just going to demonstrate what happens if we do not use the ignore target mask uh, layer mask well, what's the simplest way to explain it is just the object is going to, the raycast is going to hit the object, which is going to move the object closer, and then it's going to fire again, which is going to move the object closer. So, we're, so in theory, our object should just be coming closer and closer to us, and at the same time, shrinking in size. So, we have a top-down view, we have our game view, and we have removed it from the code, as you saw in the video, and we'll see what happens once we click. So, three, two, one, and there we go. So, as you can see, as I move the Raycast, well first it hits the wall and if I keep moving it, it's gonna hit the wall. It looks like a really weird ping pong ball, but if I just keep it steady, it's just gonna raycast and hit the target itself and it's just gonna move it closer to us at all times. So yeah, that, that happens. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, I would really appreciate a like if, and subscribe if you really, really enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Uh, all the resources are linked in the description and I hope you guys have a nice day. Goodbye.